welcome back to Fancy Nancy LV, and I'm so happy you have returned back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you some fall recipes that I absolutely love to make for my family. The weather is getting cozy all over other areas. Even though in Vegas it takes a little bit longer than other areas, but so what? I still want comforting food when it's September and fall weather. So this was requested by my uh, daughter because she's turning 23. Today on this day I'm recording this. So happy birthday to you, my Lex Poo, and I'm making oxtails, rice, southern corn and okra with um, tomatoes in it. So come on, you guys. I'll let you know what you need. Come on and cook with me. Make this for your family on a cozy fall day. Okay, so I'm gonna walk through everything you're gonna need. You're gonna need oxtails, of course. These have already been rinsed, patted dry, and seasoned. I'll show you what I season with them. I am making a large amount because I, this is for my daughter's birthday dinner. This is what she requested. And you're gonna need, I used about a bell pepper and a half of red bell pepper, green pepper, and garlic, just sliced up and cut up. Then I have uh, vegetable oil, uh, seasoning salt, regular salt, pepper, paprika, garlic powder, and you're gonna need some flour because we're gonna coat the oxtails and we're gonna brown them on all sides. Your seasonings are gonna depend on what you'd like to season your food with, okay? So that's all you're doing. So these are already seasoned. We're gonna get to the browning process. So we're gonna be using flour and we're gonna put it on this plate and spread it so we can coat all of our oxtails. So we'll just spread it. So I have a special little guest coming by to help me and I can't wait for all of you to meet her. What are you trying to say? You're going to help Nana. She's going to help me with these oxtails. Her hands are washed. Don't touch that. They're going to be washed again now. Okay, so I'm going to help her. This is Bentley, but he's not. So, Leah, what are we going to do? We're going to put the oxtails in the flour. The oxtails in the flour and put them in there. So, my little helper is going to help me, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me, let me put one there for you. Did she say she's the cooker? This little granddaughter of mine, I just love her. She's so energetic, and I'm so thankful to be making these priceless memories with her of us cooking together. Okay, so I have a paper, heavily paper towel lined dish because I'm gonna brown each oxtail in some grease in this pot. And then I'm gonna put them to drain there because the oxtails are gonna release enough grease on their own. So we're gonna put like, mm, that much grease. Because we're also going to strain this grease and use this for some of our gravy for the oxtails when we put them in the oven. Okay, let's get to browning. Okay, so that's how hot you want your pan. And you want to continue to put more oxtails in there without crowning it, of course, because you're going to be turning them so that they don't steam and they actually brown. So we're going to do ours in batches until they're all the way done. Okay, so just baby them and turn them so they'll turn gold and brown. And they're gonna be delicious. Gonna make for some amazing gravy with all those flavors that we see in the oxtail with. And that flour is gonna help thicken that roux. Mm -mm -mm. And they're gonna look like that. They're not edible yet, guys, but they just, they're gonna look like that. The process. At this point, you want to go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees. So now we're going to make the gravy. So we're going to need some beef broth or chicken if you want, 
or this with water would work fine but this is what i would use if once i do the gravy it's not seasoned the way i like it then that's what i'm going to season with and maybe a little salt and pepper but this is the grease that was in that pot and i strained it because we just want the flavor in the grease i don't want the little burnt little bits in there and you see our pot is clean and we're ready to go so at this point we're going to go ahead and we're going to add that um, grease to make the gravy so go ahead and pour that grease i'm going to say that's about maybe like um a cup almost a cup of grease but you see that sediment i know it's flavor but i just don't like it in my gravy but if you like it you just go ahead and do you this is just how i prefer to do mine Okay, so our thickening agent is our flour, okay? We're gonna use all-purpose flour. We're gonna use about a cup, about a measure, maybe it's a cup or, or half a cup, I'm not sure what it is, but we're gonna use it, and that's what's gonna thicken our gravy. Okay, once that grease has been heated up on medium-high to high heat, you're gonna put in the flour, you're gonna whisk, 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 because you wanna get it all in there and avoid any lumps. So just keep on whisking and adding the rest of that flour, and you're gonna make sure to cook it out and keep stirring so none of that sticks to the bottom to get that raw flavor out. So if you like your gravy dark, this is what I use to add a little bit more calming, kitchen bouquet, browning and seasoning sauce. So we're gonna add a couple of splashes into there to turn it just a little bit darker. Although I would be okay with this peanut butter color, but my husband likes it a little bit darker. So of course, you know, this is the secret. Unless you know some other way, let me know. I'm literally gonna do like a little itty bitty drop because this sauce turns really dark really fast. Darker. Darker. No, that's good. Ah, that's its favorite color. We got it. Next up comes the beef broth. This is gonna depend on whatever it is, your liquid and what you want it to be. Beef broth, vegetable broth, chicken broth, water, seasoned, however you like. Whatever it is that you wanna use, you can use it at this point. Cause if you use water, you would just season it until you like the flavor of the gravy. So go ahead and add your liquid and keep stirring and whisking, I mean, because you don't want any lumps. And the gravy will thicken as it cooks. As you see here, it has thickened. And for me, it got a little bit thicker than I wanted it, but no problem. You just add a little bit more of your chicken broth, whatever it is. I actually ended up adding water along with my chicken base seasoning and just a little bit of salt and pepper. And you will see the consistency that I liked it once it's done. So now we're gonna pour this evenly over your oxos very carefully. Yep, ooh, ooh, look at that. Get it, Mr. Johnson. Evenly, yes, pour it all the way across so you're touching all of them. Okay, so you're gonna pour all your gravy on there and I'll show you the next step. So once we put in all the gravy, this is what it looked like. Mm, mm, mm. Now, if you don't like the vegetable parts, I guess at this point, you could close it tightly with foil and put it in to cook for 350 for three and a half hours to four and a half hours, depending on how much meat you have. But we're gonna put the bell peppers on top and everything, and I'll show you what it looks like. Last night we had something. Tonight I'll be guessing, but I don't really have a case. You don't have to mention just like their attention it's written all over your face i don't want to play the quiet time 
Oh my gosh, but look at those colors of the vegetables. Like, I, I love that. I love that about food. If it's visually pretty to me, I know I'm going to enjoy it, but I just love all these colors together. And I love how they smell even when you cut them. It smells so good. So for me, I made some chicken base in my water and I'm just gonna pour it on the side here, along the edges, just because we have gravy in there and I don't want it to burn. Make sure you get it on the pot because I'm going everywhere, but I just added a little bit of fluid just because it's a little thick, but this will help it all come together with the vegetable juice. So here I have it all snug and fit with the foil and I'm just going to go ahead and put it in the oven and cook it and we will see what it looks like when it's done. Next step I'm going to show you is how to make the corn, tomatoes and okra. The ingredients for the corn and okra, we're going to have oil, corn, we're going to have of course our okra, it's frozen with the end pieces cut off. My mother and I cut all the end pieces off but you should want to probably buy it whole. Garlic an onion, some cornmeal, whatever one you choose, some seasoning, salt and pepper, tomatoes, and you can also use olive oil if you wanted to. I just wanted to show you what you could use, but normally I it doesn't require canned tomatoes, but that's what I'm using today. You can also boil your tomatoes and use them fresh. So now I will toss my okra with the cornmeal. So the reason I said you should buy it whole because we opened the bags and there was a lot of end pieces and we don't really like the end pieces. So my suggestion is you either buy it whole and cut it up or you can even buy the frozen one and cut it up, but you'll get more good okra pieces versus the end pieces. So once we were done frying the okra, we added the diced onion and diced garlic in to saute a little bit. And then after that, we're gonna go ahead and combine the okra in there, the corn and the tomatoes, and then your seasoning, and you're gonna let it stew on there after that for about 30 minutes. Now I'm just gonna add my seasonings. I'm using seasoning salt. I'm probably gonna put a little bit of um, salt and pepper on there. Yep, I did. And then also, you know me, I like my chicken base. So if I, sometimes I feel like I should add chicken base to everything. So I'm pretty sure, I, see, I'm adding it. Yep, chicken base. Go ahead and put your lid on there you're gonna put the lid on you're gonna put it turn it once to low because you've had it on medium high like bubbling so turn it to low and you can let it go for 30 minutes so this is what it should look like when it's done go ahead and taste and adjust the seasoning as you'd like so for the rice you're gonna need some olive oil some cut up pieces of butter a little bit of dried herbs for seasoning and color some chicken base that i'm going to use with water some basmati rice that's been rinsed and strained there, and some diced onion. Right. 
So go ahead and pick your favorite pot where you cook rice and go ahead and put your olive oil or whatever grease you're using at the bottom and make it get hot and you bring over your rice. I was taught to brown my rice before I make it. So that's what you're gonna see me doing. I'm sauteing and browning it, kind of like if you would do rice aroni, but I'm gonna be browning it a little bit like that with the cut up onions and then I'll be adding the liquid and the seasoning. Well, not bad for only having one hand available. Okay, so here's where you see me adding the onions. Once those get cooked enough with the rice how I like it, I'm going to go ahead and add my chicken base, water, and the little pieces of butter and herbs and put it to cook and put the lid on and cook until all the water is absorbed. So as you can see, it's gotten a little tinge of either more yellow or more brown, whatever you want to call it. But now I'm just going to go ahead and add my water. And that's a congen water machine. My mother-in-law got us on congen water, alkaline water. Not a bad thing. But anyways, here goes my um, liquid with my seasoning. Put the top lid on and we are done, guys. Make sure to always taste the water for your rice because that's what your rice will taste like. So make sure you like the water and that way your rice will taste exactly how you want it. So this is what it looks like once all the water has evaporated. It smells so good. So once the, the water has evaporated, you're going to go ahead and turn off the heat off of the pot. You're going to leave the lid on and you're not going to open it. Just let it rest for like 10 to 15 minutes and it just everything just the heat just reabsorbs and makes that rice extra fluffy. So the oxtails are now done. We're taking them out the oven. They were in there for three and a half hours at 350 degrees. So let's see what they look like. Oh yes, I cannot wait to see. Oh my goodness, you guys. Look at that. That looks so good and there's enough gravy that you'll be able to scoop it and put it over your rice and eat it with those peppers. They still have the, some nice color. Look at that. <gasps> it's falling off the bone. Of course, Mr. Johnson is a taste tester. And yes, that tells me that he loves it. <laughs> like it? I love everything. I'm going to get you on video and I'll look crazy. That's okay. all right. I love you. I'll get you off a video now. Bye. How do we like the food? Bye. Oh you God. like it? She deserves a These tip. These are Miss Bonnie's um, corn and okra recipe. Yeah. Yeah, and it's good. It's so good. Birthday girl happy. Sister happy. Baby sounds happy. It's her okay. Yeah, cousin's happy. Yay. Enjoy, ladies. Thank you. Yay. Made with love. Mm -hmm. Lots of love. The way my hands feel. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications so you stay tuned to all future uploads here on Fancy Nancy LV. Make this for your family, you guys. They're going to love it. They're going to enjoy it. Go ahead and add it to your holiday table, a special occasion, a Sunday dinner, or just any old time you want something yummy and comforting. But till the next one, guys. Bye.